In the previous video, we looked at writing a test in WebDriver IO and put together a pretty simple test that just goes to a website, sets a value in an input field, submits the form, and then checks the URL. Now we're going to look at the WebDriver IO test runner and see how it can help us improve our tests. Here's the getting started guide for the test runner. What we need to know is that the WebDriver IO test runner is a command line utility that runs our tests for us based off of a configuration file that we'll build in a few minutes. It gets installed by default when you install WebDriver IO locally, so we already have it ready to go. If I copy this command and paste it into my terminal, you can see it starts the configuration helper for us. Now, every time we want to run the WebDriver IO test runner to run our test, we'd have to copy and paste this command every time, so that's a little verbose. I'm going to make an update to my package.json file and if you're not familiar with NPM scripts, they're a great way to save common commands for later usage. So here we can just paste in this path to our test runner. One nice thing about scripts is that it automatically looks in the bin path in node modules, so we don't need to include it. All we have to do is reference the utility we want to run. Now if I go ahead and save that and come back to my command line and I run NPM test, it's going to do the same thing, which is run the WebDriver IO utility. So the first thing the WebDriver IO utility does is check to see if you have a wdio.conf.js file, basically a WebDriver IO configuration file in your project folder. We don't have one set up yet, so it's going to help us set one up. We want to run our test on our local machine. We're going to use Mocha as our test framework. And yes, we would like it to install the framework for us. Thank you. Our tests are located in the test subfolder, and this uses glob matching if you're familiar with that. We'll go ahead and use the dot reporter, and we would like it installed for us. And then we're going to go ahead and skip sauce. We'll use silent logging verbosity, and we'll go with the default for where screenshots should go for now. And then we're going to set our base URL to equal what we have here. We can go ahead and remove that value, as this URL will be built off of what our base URL is. Okay, so it successfully set up our test file for us. Let's go ahead and take a look at what that is. Here's a basic JSON formatted file. We have our test specs. These are the files that are going to be tested. If you wanted to exclude any files in your folder, you could do that here. This capability matches our capabilities that we pass in. So we can actually delete this and change our browser name to Chrome. So now any test we write will use this common capability. We'll talk about sync equals true later. Our log level is silent, of course, and there's a few other things that we shouldn't worry too much about right now, but one other important item is this base URL setting. Again, this is the URL that's going to be used for all of our tests as long as we begin it with a slash. There are several other settings that we won't go into too much detail in right now. Let's go ahead and save our change for Chrome and go back to our test. We can go ahead and remove the WebDriver I.O. requirement. We can remove the client. The WebDriver IO test runner will go ahead and set our client for us, but it's going to pass it in as browser instead of client. Now, if I save this and go back to my terminal and I run npm test the second time, it's going to see that the configuration file is there. It's going to read through it and then it's going to start our test for us. Okay, so it actually didn't run anything because we're using Mocha now. And in Mocha, you have to describe and define your test suites and your test cases in a specific format. And that format is like this. We have a describe block that defines our test suite and an it block that defines our test case. We'll copy everything from our test into this it block, save it, and try running it again. Okay, you see we actually ran our test this time, but WebDriver IO wasn't happy with us calling the init command. This is because the test runner will go ahead and initialize and end the browser session for us, so we don't need to do it. We'll save the file and try running it one more time. Hmm, it ran again, but we have a different error. This time it's saying that then is not a function. When we were looking through the configuration file, I talked about taking a look at sync being true later. And what this is saying is that we want to define our test in a synchronous manner. One of the improvements with WebDriver 4.0 is the ability to, to do this, which I think is a great feature because it allows us to write our test in a more readable format. So to make this update, we're going to keep the top half of the test the same. And then for our URL, we will save the get URL response to a JavaScript variable, get rid of the then callback, and then just log out the URL. 
So while get URL is a asynchronous call, it's gonna be treated synchronously with WebDriver IO and we'll be able to read URL right away. I will save this file and let's cross our fingers and hope this works. Okay, it ran successfully. We have one passing test. You can see that the URL is output correctly and we have our test updated. One of the great features of using the configuration file is that we can have multiple test files without having to repeat the same configuration again and again and again in each file. So I really like that. The synchronous style is also nicer, I think. Makes it a little bit more understandable and easier to write with less nesting involved. Thanks for watching.